Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. Today we're going to be taking a look at a new update to Unify OS, but specifically for Unify Identity Endpoint. With Unify OS 4.1.9, which is release candidate, it supports directory integration such as Microsoft Entra, Active Directory, Google Secure LDAP, LDAP, or Jump Cloud LDAP. This is huge for me as I'm starting a Unify Access job that has over 300 users. Instead of typing the username and email manually, I could sync it to Google Secure LDAP and pull all that information. Another thing that was added to Unify Identity Endpoint was camera sharing. So now if we need a specific user to just see one camera or all the cameras, we could delegate that. If you're new here, make sure to hit the subscribe button as we're closing into 100,000 subscribers. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit my website at mactelecomnetworks.com. Now let's jump right in and get this configured. To get started, we need to click over on our admins and users. And once we're there, we need to go to identity endpoint. You would see the services that I currently am running, which is the smart door access. We have one click Wi-Fi, one click VPN and the talk soft phone. Down below, we see our directory integrations. Now, if we click on setup on the directory integrations, it's going to bring this pop up that says setup directory. We can see we have Microsoft Entra ID. We have Active Directory, Google Secure LDAP, LDAP and Jump Cloud LDAP. I'm going to be using Google Secure LDAP for this video. Now, it's already putting in our host name for us, which is LDAP.Google.com. And then it's doing the port, which is 636. We need to add our root DN in. So you're going to have to have some sort of domain. If we hover over the eye icon, it's going to show us how it should be. So DC equals example, DC equals com. So what I'm going to put here is DC equals Mac telecom. And then I'm going to put a comma and then I'm going to go DC equals com. My website is MacTelecomNetworks.com. We also need to add a username, a password, and then a client certificate in a key file. The username, the password, the client certificate, and the key file is all done under our admin.google.com. So that's where we're gonna go to. When we're signed into our admin.google.com, we need to go over to apps and then we need to select LDAP. You could see that I don't have any LDAP clients right now, but we could add one, so I'll click here. We need to give this LDAP client a name. I'm just gonna call this Unify Network. We could put a description in if we'd like, and then we need to press continue. Now this is where we need to do our access permission. So it says verify user credentials. I'm just gonna do it for my whole domain. I just have my one main account and then a test account. You'd also select your organizational units, but we'll do entire domain. And then we're just gonna put the read useful information, entire domain, scroll to the bottom, and then add the LDAP client. The next step, it says connect your client to the LDAP services. And you can see that we have a certificate right there. I'm not gonna download that quite yet, but we're gonna continue to the client details. Now we're over at the service status and it's currently turned off. We're gonna click on this and then we're gonna turn it on for everybody and press save. Now the next step we need to do is have access credentials. We have zero access credentials right now, so we'll click on access credentials. And then up top you could see our certificate, but we need to generate new credentials. It's gonna give us a username and then a password. So I'm gonna copy the username and we're gonna go back to my UDM. Back at the UDM, we're gonna go and we're gonna paste that username in. We'll go back to the admin console for Google. We'll copy the password, go back to the UDM and then paste that in to set up our directory. The next thing we need to do is do the client certificate. So we'll click back on the admin console of our Google and then we're gonna download the certificate. This is gonna to go to a zip file, so we're gonna to need to extract this somewhere. I'll extract it to my desktop. Now we could either drag and drop the certificate in, or we could click where the certificate file is. Right now it's just on desktop and then in a folder called cert. So I'll click on the cert and we'll press open. We need to do the same thing with the key file. Once all of that is in, we could just press add and it will start syncing our directory and bring in users that aren't currently already in our UDM. It will say sync scope, you could either do all or specific OUs. I'm just gonna start syncing. On the right hand side, you could see it's syncing with Google Secure LDAP. All right, so the syncing is done as I only have two users, so it didn't take too long. And you could see the users at the side, which is two. The last sync, we could see the status, the host name, the port, the SSL certificate, the root DN, username, and then the sync scope. Now there's a few other things that we could look at. We could look over our insights and it's gonna show us what's happened. So on November 26th, 2024, it's synced to users. Clicking on the settings wheel, we could say when we want it to sync. Right now it's just once a day, but we could do never, every hour, two hours, three hours, five hours, six hours, twice a day, every two days, 
or whatever you would like. We also have the group mapping, LDAP configuration, provisioning, advanced, or we could deactivate altogether, but I'm gonna leave that all at default. You could look through that if you wish. Now, how do we give the users that we already pulled in or we synced from our Google Secure LDAP permissions to use our Wi-Fi or our VPN? Well, we need to hop over to users. Now we could see two users that have been brought into this UDM. We have the top one, which the source was by UI, so unify.ui.com or my account through Ubiquity. And then we have the bottom one, which is unify at mactelecomnetworks.com. And the source was our Google Secure LDAP. You'd see right now, the only permissions that it has is access policies. But if we click on this user, we click on the settings wheel and then we could click on assignments. From assignments, we could give them different access. So we could give them access to our network and this will be our one-click Wi-Fi and our one-click VPN. And then we could apply those changes and they'd be able to use the Wi-Fi and the VPN. And that's how easy it is to sync users using Google Secure LDAP. I would assume Microsoft and Jump Cloud have similar processes. Let's now take a look at camera sharing with Unify Identity Endpoint on my UMVR Pro. I'm now over on my UMVR Pro and we're over on the identity endpoint. You could see that I have camera sharing checked off. If we click on our users, we need to specify which cameras the users could look at. So I'll click on the users and then we're gonna select this unify at macdelecomnetworks.com. I'm gonna click on the settings wheel and we're gonna scroll down and we could see that we have protect. I'm gonna check it off. Now we could add shared cameras to this user. I'll click on the shared cameras and then we just need to select which cameras we want this user to view. With the cameras added, I'm gonna invite this user to identity endpoint again, and I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna copy this link. From the link, I'm gonna set it up on my phone, and you can see the QR code here that I will need to scan into the identity endpoint on my iPhone. Now on my iPhone, you can see that I have five cameras that are assigned to this user and the camera sharing work perfectly. And that's gonna be it for this video. This new addition to Unify Identity Endpoint is great and will save people a lot of time now that we could integrate with LDAP. The camera sharing is also a nice addition. Let me know in the comments below what you think of these new updates. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.